Python pals, this is Prof G, and I'm touched that you continue to watch our Circuit Python School videos, which is appropriate because we're about to work with Capacitive Touch using the Adafruit MPR121 Stem QT breakout board, which offers a touchingly large 12 Capacitive Touch pads, each of which is alligator clip friendly, and which can sense your capacitive presence or that of any other object that can convey capacitance. Now, conveniently, this board also has Stem QT ports, so you can use this on any Circuit Python board that has a Stem QT or quick port, or you can wire up a Stem QT cable like we demonstrated in the prior video. First I'll show you how we can set up and program this board, then we'll have a challenge where we'll also wire up a NeoPixel strip and flash different colors depending on the pad that's touched. So let's learn, my conductive companions! So this is the board we're using, and at the time that I'm recording this video it costs less than $7, it also has Stem QT ports on it, I'm going to be demoing this on an Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, but this can work on any board that has a Stem QT cable wired to it, or that comes with a Stem QT port. Now here's how we work with this board. First, make sure that you import the Adafruit underscore MPR121 library. Now we don't need the Touch.io library that we used when working with the Circuit Playground boards, but when using the MPR121, we do need this library. Now remember, you need to have these libraries in your LIB folder on the board for things to work properly, and also remember, we usually import our board library in most examples we work with, and we also often use the time library. Then we simply create an I2C object via the board.i2c class, as we do in most cases when working with Stem QT. Then we'll create an object that will hold all 12 touchpads, which I'll call touch underscore pad, and we do that with the Adafruit underscore MPR121 library, use dot notation to access the MPR121 class, and we pass in the I2C object that we just created above. Then if we want to detect if a pad has been touched, we just refer to an individual pad via its index number, so we can check all pads using a for loop like this, looping through a range of 12, which will take us from index value 0 through 11, and if an individual touch pad's dot value property is true, then that pad has been touched. So why don't we implement this code here, which will simply print the number of the pad being touched, over to Moo. So I'll enter my comment using the MPR121, and I'm going to import board and comma Adafruit underscore MPR121. Then I'm going to create my I squared C object with I to C equals board period capital I to capital C open and close parens. And then I'm going to create my touchpad object, which I'm going to call touch underscore pad. Set that equal to Adafruit underscore MPR121. That's the library we just imported. Dot and in capital letters MPR121 and in parentheses pass in the I squared C object we just created. Then in my while true loop, make sure that you add your colon at the end. For I in range 12 in parentheses, add the colon in the end. That will loop through all 12 pads in the touchpad. Then we can check each pad individually if touch underscore pad in brackets i dot value colon if that is true then we'll print and in parentheses in double quotes you touched pad number and then curly braces exclamation point close double quotes and we'll use our dot format method that we learned about in the last video and in parentheses after that we'll pass in i and close with one more parenthesis. Now that's it, let's make sure that we plug our MPR121 into our stem QT cable you can see a little light goes on on the board. That indicates everything's powered up and ready to go. So let's save this program to our CircuitPy volume as code.py. Open the serial monitor. I might have to click save again. And let's experience the magic. So I've got my board here, and I'm pressing 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I'll scroll from the bottom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right across. Look at that, all those pads are being touched. I can see in the serial console across the top again as well. This is working great. I think it's time for a challenge. So in this challenge, you should hook up a NeoPixel strip to your board. We showed how to do that in a prior video. Here's a diagram of how I set this up on my Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. Now this diagram also shows how I attach the four wires for the Stem QT connector, but you can ignore that if you don't need it. But for the three NeoPixel wires over here, power is going into VIN, but you can also use the 3.3 volt pin. If you do that, your strip might be just a little bit dimmer. Ground goes into any GND pin. I used pin D7 for my signal pin. You can use a different pin that supports digital I.O., but if you do, just make sure that you modify your code to refer to that pin instead of D7, which I'm going to be using. Then, import the Adafruit colors that are included in the Adafruit underscore LED underscore animations library. To make things easier on you, I have a GitHub gist where you can copy and paste the color import statements at this URL, bit.ly slash Adafruit dash LED dash animation dash colors. Then add these two colors, and create this color list, which has 12 colors, one for each capacitive touch pad on the MPR121. Then, when any capacitive touch pad is touched, 
light up the same color at the same index value for that pad. So touchpad zero should light all of the LEDs in red. That's the first color in colors at index zero. Touchpad 11 should light the LEDs in white. That's the last of the 12 colors at the index position 11. Now keep the lights lit as long as a pad is being touched, but if no pads are being touched, then turn off all of the LEDs. Now the video at the right is showing a demo of what this should look like when it's running. You know how to do this. I have faith in you. Why don't you pause, give this a shot, and let's resume and compare answers. Now back in Moo, I'm going to add to the comment so that I say that I'm using the MPR121 and an LED strip. Then if I head to that URL that I gave you, bit.ly slash adafruit-led-animation-colors, you'll see this bit of code here. I'm going to highlight that, copy it, return to Moo, and paste it in under my import statements. Now this imports the basic colors, but I'm going to add two more to this. I'm going to type in indigo in all capital letters and set that equal to in parentheses 63 comma 0 comma 255, and violet in all capital letters, setting that equal to in parentheses 127 comma 0 comma 255. Then I'm going to set up my colors list, making that equal to in brackets red, comma magenta, comma orange, comma yellow, comma green, comma jade, comma teal, comma blue, comma indigo, comma violet, comma purple, and comma white. Make sure that you close square brackets. I'm going to shrink this up, count them off, and I indeed have 12 colors in there, which is what I want, one color for each pad. Then I'll readjust my screen size, and I'm going to create my light strip object, although I need to import both NeoPixel, and I'm going to also import time. Then I'll set strip equal to NeoPixel dot capital N Neo capital P pixel, and in parentheses board dot D7, that's my signal pin, comma 30, there are 30 lights in my LED strip, comma brightness equals 0 0.5, that's halfway brightness, comma auto underscore right equals capital T true. Then in my while true loop, if the pad is touched, I'm going to add the line strip dot fill, and in parentheses colors and in brackets I, that's going to light up the strip in the same color at the index number that matches the index of the pad that was touched. Now also, if no pads are being touched, then I want to turn off all lights, meaning I want to fill them in with the color black. That's RGB 0, 0, and 0, so no lights are on. And the technique we'll use is one we've used in a previous CircuitPython school video. I'm going to first create a Boolean value named touched, and I'm going to set that initially to false. So every time I go through this while true loop, I'm going to set touch to false. We're going to assume no pads are touched. But then as we go through and check all of the 12 pads in this for loop, if at least one of the pads is touched, then we're going to set touched equals true. Now then after the loop, I'm going to outdent so that this statement isn't in the for loop above. I'm going to check to see if touched equals equals false, colon at the end. And if this is true, then I'm going to fill in the strip dot fill with the color black that turns off all the lights in the strip. And that's it. Now I'm going to connect my LED strip to my Arduino board, and I'm going to do that with some jumper wire. So this pin is going into D7. You can find D7 on the pinout diagram I showed earlier, but I know this pin is on the left side of this second large chip that's along the bottom row. Then I'm going to plug my power wire into VIN. That's this top pin at the farthest left. And if your board doesn't have a VIN, no problem. You can just use the 3.3 volt pin. And I'll plug the ground into any of the GND pins. I'm going to use this one next to VIN. Again, always make extra sure that you're not plugging your ground into power. That could melt components when you power up, causing smoke or other damage. So always be sure that you're safe. If I was smarter, I actually would have unplugged the board before doing my wiring, but I'm going to be okay. And then once things are wired up, I'm going to clip the alligator clips onto my NeoPixel strip to the end of these jumper wires. Power to power, ground to ground, signal to signal. Then let's save our work. Open the serial console, and as we touch the pads, look at that, the lights are lighting up in the appropriate color in the colors list for the pad that I'm touching. We can see that the lights are going off if I lift my finger off, but if I slide my finger across, I can see that the lights light up in a rainbow. I hope you're feeling good about your skills, Pythonista. You're learning big. Keep at it.